Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today we're going to be talking about what to do with container-grown spring bulbs, like these daffodils, or you might have tulips or hyacinths or any other kind of spring flowering bulb in a container. They're finished with their show and you really don't want them there anymore, but you don't want to throw them away. These daffodils were gorgeous a couple of weeks ago, but now they are done blooming and it's time for the sun to fill up their leaves with beautiful energy so that the bulbs can come back next year and flower some more. But I don't want this here. Uh, so let's figure out how we can take care of our spring flowering bulbs that have grown in containers and are ready to be replaced with other things. In this planter box I have Mount Hood daffodils, that's what these are, and then back here I had some Dutch Master. So there's two different kinds of daffodils in this container and they were beautiful a couple of weeks ago. I really enjoyed the show. Um, but I don't want them here for the rest of the season. I want to put different flowering bulbs in here for next spring and in the summertime these are just really in the way of the perennials that I have going on in here. And I might want to put some other annuals in here as well. So what do I do with these? I don't want to lose them. I don't want to throw them away. What I'm going to do is gently lift them up, bulb and all, and replant them in a very sunny location. And that will allow them to continue to gather energy from the sun and die back naturally so that they'll be strong and ready to flower again next spring. Now you can do this with daffodils, tulips, hyacinths, and lots of other types of flowering bulbs, uh, grape hyacinths and things like that. This is called transplanting them in the green. Now sometimes in the green they're also flowering, uh, but you can see why it's called in the green because they're still green. They're not yet died back for the summer. So I'm going to get a couple of tools here. I don't need a whole lot. I just need a hand spade to get these out of here and maybe a, a digging shovel for where I'm going to put them. And I'm going to get some bulb uh, fertilizer to put in the holes when I plant them in the new place. Other than that, that's really all I need. So let's get this project underway. All right, so there we go. This is one of the Mount Hood daffodils. You can see its root system here is intact. I'm gonna, when I replant it, I'm gonna bury it up to where it was buried before, which you can tell where it goes from white to green, kind of like an onion. Um, this is where the soil level needs to be when it gets replanted. That's a nice big one. I'm gonna leave the dirt on there because it'll make it easier transfer. Look how long these roots were. I think the one I just pulled out, probably some of these got cut off when I was pulling it out. Yeah, I lost all these roots because my shovel went through it. But that's a really nice looking root. Okay, I lost a lot of those, darn. Well, these are, let's see, which ones are the Dutch Master and which ones are the Mount Hood? Hmm. Oops, I sliced through a daffodil bulb on that one. I don't recall if this is a Dutch Master or a Mount Hood, so I'm going to leave it for now, see if I can discern a pattern on the other side.
All right, this is a pile that I believe are Dutch Masters, yellow. This is a pile that I think are the Mount Hood, but I'm not exactly sure. And then this is all of the ones that I know are the Mount Hood. Now this planter box could use a little bit of a sprucing up. It needs some topping up of soil. Uh, I need to trim back these euchras and let them refresh with their spring growth. And um, maybe a little fertilizer in here to get the season off to a good start. Um, I would like to uh, prune up these Steed's hollies, um, get them growing nicely. Just supercharge this and I might end up putting in some annuals in here. I've got this Hakanakloa grass that's doing really well here. Maybe I'll put more of that in here. Not exactly sure. I also have two ferns in here that don't seem to have really thrived, so they may come out. I'm not sure. But anyway, this project, this part is going to be for another day. Today, we're just going to plant those daffodil bulbs out in the shrub border. Okay, so um, I don't yet have any daffodils in this area of the garden. I had some in containers on the front porch and I have a lot out by the sidewalk, but nothing in here yet. So really anything I place is going to be beautiful in my opinion. Now with daffodils, at least in my experience, they like to point their flower faces toward the sun. And in the early spring or mid spring, when there are no leaves yet on the trees, that usually means they're facing their little happy faces toward the south. So if I put daffodils along this north border, they'll face this way, which is perfect. If I were to put them on that side of the sidewalk, on the, uh, facing toward the south, then at the front porch we would never see the flowers because they're facing that way. So this is a great place to put daffodils in particular. So I have definitely white Mount Hoods. Don't know if they're Mount Hoods or Dutch Master Yellows and definitely Dutch Master Yellows. So I think I'm going to mix and match because to me every daffodil is beautiful. So yeah, I'm going to plant them in clumps of roughly four or five per hole and just let them be abundant. All right, so how many do I have? All right, I'm looking at the leaf shape and size, and I think this one's a Mount Hood compared to the Dutch Masters over here. So I'm gonna put that in that pile. And yeah, that makes sense. I think I have 10 Dutch Masters that are all yellow, and then I have the rest of them are Mount Hoods. So that's good to know. So I have 10 of the uh, Dutch Masters, so I'm gonna plant what will I plant? Maybe three clumps of three or four, or I could do two clumps of five or one clump of 10, but maybe I'll do, I'll do two clumps of five. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'm gonna put this clump right in front of the liatris so that next spring they'll come up on the front edge of the border and then the liatris will come up behind it and kind of give a place to shield the greenery as it grows. Maybe I'll do the exact same thing right here. All right. All right, and now I have three clumps of five of the Mount Hood, so that works out nicely. I can kind of stagger them. Really, the placement of everything in this garden is kind of random, kind of on purpose. I don't know how you do your garden, but for me, it's just like, where does this look good? How about here? Yeah, okay, that'll work. <laughs> now, to give these bulbs a little bit of an extra boost as they gather energy for next year's show, I'm gonna be putting in some bulb tone into each planting hole. So, uh, now the instructions here say that you should be feeding them right before they flower. I didn't do that. So I'm going to feed them now and they'll uh, either use these nutrients or they won't, but I'm going to give them a shot. So I don't think it's hundred percent necessary, but I figure I have it and I might as well use it. So a little bit of bulb tone in each hole instead of using something like biotone. 
by the way, this does have some of the micro microbiology in it that Biotone has. It has um, a lot of different kinds of bacterias. So I think that this brand, Hespoma, does a really nice job of adding to your soil health and not just feeding your plants. Now for this, I'm just gonna dig a hole pretty deep, probably six or eight inches deep, and then put the bulb tone in, and then put the bulbs in there and let the greenery come up as a clump, backfill, and walk away. That's, well, I'll water them in. And that's just about it, so let's get started. Nice to see the mulch doing its job. We had a lot of rain over the last few days and the top looks dry, but right underneath the mulch is super, super moist still. So that's good news. You can see I'm just putting them right next to each other. This means I'll have to divide them a little bit sooner in the future, but for now, ease of planting wins out over future planting. Call me short-sighted. Oh well. And that's it, super easy. Um, I will say that if you don't have time to put the bulbs into the ground on the same day that you dig them out, then it's a really good idea to put them into a bucket and cover their roots with soil and put a little bit of water on them. Don't let them drown because then they'll rot, but keep them in some nutrient soil in a bucket until you can get them into the ground for sure. So that's about it. I'm gonna do the rest of these clumps in the same way. And by the way, I have some other daffodils in containers elsewhere. I also have some hyacinth bulbs and um, some tulips that I'm gonna be doing the same treatment to. Um, so hopefully next year's landscape will have more bulbs in it and next year's containers can start fresh with something new. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. I hope you learned something. Or if you have other ideas or other suggestions or tips or tricks for how to take care of your container bulbs after they're done flowering, put them in the comment section down below. Let's learn all about the different methods that you can use to do this project. Thank you for watching today. I hope you're having a great day in your garden and I hope I'll see you again in another video real soon, friends. Take care, bye-bye.